Stumpers, what's going on? We're here with Johnny Rosedale and myself for week 13, otherwise known as Rivalry Rivalry Week, otherwise known as Johnny is going to fade his favorite team, and it's what we call in the business a life hedge. Uh, he's coming <laughs> off he's coming off a huge Yates Cup win. I know him and his yeah. boys were partying. They were hit. Who, who won again? Guelph? Come on, man. That's your squad. Western, baby. 28 zip, a quick time. I'm glad I didn't say Queens. I almost said Queens. Western. Where is Western? Where is London, Ontario? Yeah. That all all the streets were packed. All the bars. Oh, it, was, it was rammed. No fucking uh <laughs> no one's had no one has vaccine over there. Everyone's just parting it up, spreading <laughs> the virus out there. Now we got four teams left, man. It's official. It's the Vanier Cup, in case you I weren't wondering. No way. I I told somebody. We are not going to talk CIS anymore. No. Gate Cup are you over. kidding me? No, the college football this week is whack. It's this rivalry is, week. Pfft. This, this is, is final CIS four? time. Yeah, no, this is the final four now. Now this is for Canada. Montreal so versus should... Saskatchewan. Who you got? Montreal, Saskatchewan. Quick time. Always Saskatchewan. Okay, I got Montreal. Western and St. FX. St. FX. Uh, Western, okay. There it is, bro. That's the. These are the final four. And then the championships in Quebec City. For the Vanier Cup. This is for Canada, baby. Quebec City. They don't even want to be part of Canada. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna so in this episode, we'll recap week 12. We'll look forward to week 13, which is uh big, big robberies, and we'll look at the top six and sort of how we feel it looks. I feel like we're gonna be on the same page. Something I like about this is we don't discuss it before we hop on, so there may be some uh disagreements, but let's start in week 12. We're gonna go with I think, in your opinion, like future Hall of Famer Sam Hartman, uh, Wake Forest at Clemson, that that played out a lot like we thought, where Clemson was going to be really stingy on defense. But yeah, fuck, they, Wake Forest D is worse than we thought. No, yeah, yeah, they their defense is terrible. And again, Clemson is showing that even though they're not college football playoffs uh, contenders, they are still the possibly the cream of the crop in the ACC and I mean they're at eight and three I don't know if they'll actually get a chance to play in the championship game but the longer it's going the longer you know they're figuring it out and on defense they're still solid and then obviously it shows that Hartman wasn't the same guy who could put up uh, you know a bunch of points he's still you know if, if you look at his stats not bad right 27 43 3 12 one TD one INT but I mean, yeah, Clemson Clemson took it to them on the ground. Like they, they just ran the ball. When you got a white guy went running the ball on that Clemson team and he goes for two touchdowns, got pace and Shipley. Woo. Hey, I'm gonna say, like, I think Hartman's stats were a little bit empty there. Personally, I thought that he, he didn't look great until game sort of felt out of hand. Yeah, I, later on. Yeah. I have a question for you. So why wouldn't they make the ACC championship game? So I'm looking at the standing screen, as I'm sure you are. So both teams are six and two, right? Both teams are six and two yeah. within the conference. I think Clemson went their in. I, I don't okay. see so because they got the they they have the the yeah. um, at the, the tiebreaker, right? Head to head, I thought. I, unless I'm yeah, yeah, no, no, you think I think you're right. I'm just looking because I just see that I, I'm not looking at the standings. I just see that they're second in the ACC, but I guess that's second overall. Yeah, no, no. It, for some reason, the Atlantic Coast Atlantic Division has Wake Forest first. And Clemson second with the same. Well, that's my think, yeah, that's my I argument. Think, I think it might be because of the wins losses out of conference, but we know in okay. conference that doesn't matter, right? Yeah, Maybe, yeah. I I don't think, but yeah. So either way, one of those two teams are going to be playing Pitt. Uh, Clemson definitely looks like the best team within twelve to twenty five, and in my opinion, that might sound like a hot take as an unranked football team. I don't think there's a defense that looks like that in the 12 to 25 range. Maybe I'm missing somebody off the top of my head. I think there are a lot of pros on that D. I think oh, yeah. they're able to turn good teams over. Hartman takes care of the ball for the most part, only through one pick, but they never, Wake Forest never looked comfortable. And no matter how many games they've lost this year, they've looked comfortable at least playing offense. Oh, yeah. And, and we can circle back to week one where they held what seems like a very healthy Georgia offense. They held them in check all game. And so to me, it's a top 25 program or team story with an incredible defense. Is that a hot take? Maybe. I don't know. 
No, I agree with you. Um, I, again, the expectation for Clemson was, and will always be as far as, you know, the last few years and moving forward would be always college football playoffs. So that's where it's a disappointment, but the program is still, you know, as the season's gone on, it's still a solid program and it keeps, you know, winning games and it goes to the ACC championship game. And like, would you be surprised if they win it? It's like, I'm hoping they don't, but guess what? It's most likely they probably will. That would be um, an ugly, that would be, they would be an ugly New Year's six bowl team, in my opinion. As good correct. as their defense is, they would be ugly. Correct. Be ugly but ugly. at the same time, it's the, the brand name is if you're, if you're hosting that, that, you know, uh, bowl game and you're also televising it, Clemson is a better team to showcase as opposed to maybe some of these other squads that are in the same kind of list sure. um, because they're, you know, they're known people do know the, the, the coach, they do know the program. They follow them every year. They're top four team in the country, like preseason wise. Um, and this year, unfortunately, yeah, they just fell off. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know what? I might have to do a little switcheroo with Clemson, man. You know, oh, it's coming. Yeah. You know, it's very funny. I'm going to say, I was about to tell you, South Carolina stinks. Beamer's boy. No, Beamer's boy has them bowl eligible. They're short underdogs. I think it's like 11. Yeah. I'm going to give you my hot take and we can do a coffee bet on this one. I think South Carolina beats them outright. I watched South really? Carolina last week. I watched South Carolina last week. They are, it's not pretty by any stretch. They, they compete and I don't know. I, I feel like it's a real letdown spot for Clemson. And I'm also probably just trying to manifest the fact I don't want to see Clemson win the ACC. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. And I think I think South Carolina coming off the Auburn win, now that they're bowl eligible, this will just take them up a notch. So I'm going to say a real long shot underdog. I'm going to say South Carolina beats them. Real long shot. But wow. you know, if it comes through, dude, I don't give a shit what happens in any other rivalry. If that comes through, I'm hammering the drum. Going to let you know. That I came with that dog. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Was, you, you don't buy it. You don't buy it. You're, you're buying what I'm selling. <laughs> I buy Clemson is going to smoke them, but that's my take on them. Let's but, see. Let's yeah. see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on to real, real football because he's, he's a joke. Uh, <laughs> we'll go on to, to my favorite conference. Uh, Iowa State at Oklahoma, 28-21. You and I sort of messaged about this game. Uh, score was a lot closer, although it was a two score game all game. It felt like there was a big play before halftime, which is a scoop and score, which turned out to be like a 10 point swing that Oklahoma mm -hmm. grabbed. Uh, it was I, a big, I thought Oklahoma big ass I thought, hit on, on right? Brock Birdie over there. They, they did. Uh, I thought Oklahoma was going to wall them. This was one a pick that I hit, but it didn't, it, it wasn't a pretty one. There would be an asterisk there. It didn't didn't look as pretty. And I know for a fact, if Iowa state scores that touchdown, they go for two, they go for two, they ruin the spread and they want to get the win in Norman. Uh, yeah. Oklahoma's just lost a lot of steam going into Bedlam, which we'll talk about shortly. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to think of them. They, they really have no identity with, with Caleb Williams. They have no, like, they're gonna more. They're gonna morph the playbook around him, what he does. But yeah, I feel like yeah those yeah. good Oklahoma teams have a solid run game between the tackles. Then they get aerial. Doesn't really fit with this. So maybe maybe I'm I'm over I'm overreacting. But am I wrong on there? I mean, maybe the I Iowa State defense. You're not giving their defense as much credit because again, when we said Caleb Williams um, was looking amazing and these last three games were going to dictate how good he really is. And, and Iowa state again, preseason top 10 team. Uh, he didn't, Caleb Williams didn't look the greatest against Baylor. And in this game, you're absolutely right. He also didn't throw for much 87 yards, one TD, one INT. Um, they ran the ball. Um, but again, you're starting to see the little flaws of a true freshman, which is now he's playing against better defenses and, a shitty conference and pretty much there, you know, teams are going to, you know, give them different looks that he hasn't been, you know, hasn't been seen before, not in high school. And, you know, it's always, it always takes time to, to adjust to another level. And, you know, this weekend, like you said, will be an interesting take where now he's going to against what I think you said is the best defense in the big 12 and that's Oklahoma state, right? 
yeah, I, I'm going to say a top 10 in, in the country, but yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting. I think Oklahoma sort of is going to survive an advanced game, and that was big. Uh, I just, it, it, they're not that they need to be style. I just didn't think they looked good doing it. They didn't need to blow them out. Iowa State's a good team, but it, it didn't, it didn't really, I, I think even the guys in the desert don't believe that they are that good. They, they are significant dogs in Oklahoma mm-hmm. State. I don't remember the last time I've seen that. So I think they're telling you something, but yeah, uh, we'll click, we'll quickly gloss over Baylor at K State. Real, real like big program win for Baylor. Uh, I think I think this game was close to a pick 'em, maybe a minus one for Baylor. They looked in, in control for most of it, and K State's an ugly team. They're that ugly team. You don't want to go on the road, play there. Nice win, very impressive. At least for me, for that would that would have been the perfect letdown spot. And I know you had K State, but you switched last minute to Notre Dame last mm-hmm. week. And I, I understood why you liked K State. It was one of yeah. those where I was like, oh yeah, they, they're totally gonna overlook this. This is like a a nothing game. And no, it was uh, it, it was quite impressive. Nothing really for you to input there. Do you do you think anything there? Uh, no, I just I just saw quick highlights. I didn't really pay too much yeah. attention to the game. Um, I'm assuming that the winner of Oklahoma Oklahoma State plays Baylor in the Big Twelve. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how it's shaken up to be because how it's going to play is Baylor has Texas Tech this week, which they should win. Correct. So if I yeah, mean, hey, I Texas believe, Tech has a guy who can kick a ball sixty-two yards, so just don't make it a last-second possession. Yeah, I. So Baylor has lost to Oklahoma State, but beat uh-huh. Oklahoma. So if the Oklahoma State wins, then yeah, Baylor's in the. Uh, Big 12 championship. Now, okay. if Oklahoma beats Oklahoma State, then they just play again next week. No, so, it's very, uh, so it's very interesting that way. There's there's the two scenarios in the Big 12. Mm-hmm. It's shaking out to be fun. And we'll, we'll just gloss over Oklahoma State, 23-0 at Texas Tech. Uh, shutout's very impressive. They, oh, yeah. It, the, the, offensively, they're very, very difficult to watch at times. I would be lying to you. I like Oklahoma State. I like their program. But I usually like them when they're a little bit more fun on offense. This is just a different brand. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much hoping they beat Oklahoma this week. But it's not if they beat them, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a rock fight. That's what they do. Yeah, no, I, I like, I like you know, especially with how the defense, if this de- defense is uh, playing this well, it will definitely make it annoying for Caleb Williams. He He's struggled these last two games against upper echelon Big 12 defenses, and this one will be no different, right? It'll be another one to see, yeah. test out, you know, the future star, Caleb Williams, and see how he does, a, a true freshman against these guys. Bedlam always gets very, very nutty. It always gets nutty. It always gets very weird. So, so are you expecting like a high scoring in the yeah, 30s, 40s? Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's backwards. I feel, I feel like Bedlam usually like, even high scoring games you pre- you predicted within the this series, it's like stupidly high scoring. It's like in the seventh. Yeah. It's it's a very weird game. Uh it obviously would favor Oklahoma State to play in the 40s, but shall see. I, I hope for I hope, you know, I, I'm gonna state this. It's Wednesday at 745, officially on vacation for four days. I'm gonna state something. I deserve a 2-0 rivalry week scenario i deserve oklahoma state to be beat oklahoma and michigan to beat ohio state i deserve one <laughs> i have not seen one in a very long time i deserve one and why not the year i start a pot right so we shall see fingers crossed uh, I, and I i did not take oklahoma state as a hint i did not take them this week but i could not stay away from the other one uh, now we're gonna go to the big 10 which we knew was going to be a little bit weird this week or sorry this past week uh, Michigan with a solid statement, 59-18 at Maryland. Uh, no real surprises. I'm glad they came out looking sharp, making a statement. And I know anyone that follows the Big Ten knows the way the schedule played out is Ohio State thrashed Michigan State 56-7. And shout out to you and I for both saying Ohio State was just going to pick a number. They could have – they this could have been 100. Could have been 100. It was it was sick. You know? Oh, yeah. I watched the first half, and, I mean, that was a destruction right off the bat, right? I think it was, like, 
zip at halftime. I think I, I watched the first quarter. It was 21 nothing right off the bat, right? So that's what um, – yeah, I mean, again, great for Mel Tucker to have a great season, a very unexpected season. And, I mean, they just ran, ran into a buzzsaw because it just showed that they weren't, you know, not in the same I, level. I'm, um, not as, I'm not as nice and generous as you. So congrats on getting paid. Congrats on an overachieving season. I think what bothers me most is that Michigan State fans actually thought they stood a chance. And they, there were <laughs> arguments that they should have been higher in the CFP. They were, they are, they are one of the fakest top 25 programs in the country. And I understand my favorite team lost to them. And you run that game back, Michigan beats them seven, eight out of 10 times on the road. Oh, they, yeah. they, they, their secondary is garbage, solid run game, few good skill, skill position guys. They do not match up with the cream of the crop. And guess what? In three days, someone may look at me and be like, yeah, Michigan doesn't belong either. Valid. They're better than Michigan State. At the end of this season, no matter what these two teams do, Michigan needs to be ranked ahead of Michigan State. All signs point to Ohio State being the best team of the Big Ten. I want to know who the second is. I think anybody that knows anything knows it's Michigan. Tougher schedule this season, weirder schedule. We're not expected to be this good. I'm going on a slight tangent here. I just, I, I find it comical at the excuses. Like, and not that you were making excuses. Like, you know, good season. No, you never want to lose 56-7. Michigan loses 56-7 this week. It's not a good season. You can't get smoked in a rivalry week. And when you do, there's right in a rivalry game. When you do, yeah, good season minus that blowout. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you're being, in my opinion, you're being a little too critical, but because I'm just looking at it from uh, Michigan State was not a preseason ranked team. They're not supposed to be this good. And even Michigan wasn't supposed to be. Both of them were not top 25 teams. So that's the only reason why I give them, I give them more of like praise where it's like, hey, they had a better season than, you know, Wisconsin, Iowa, Penn State, right? And, and, you know, the upper echelon teams, that which all those three teams were actually preseason ranked, right? So I just give them, I just give them more credit like that for Michigan and Michigan State. Now, yes, the cream of the crop is Ohio State and you get blown out like that, especially like we said before, um, you got a big ass contract and they probably gave it at the wrong time because it just doesn't look good, yeah. right? But it does looks terrible actually do it like after the Michigan game, which would have been way better. Um, but yeah, just, I guess they're just, their you know, way of thinking is like, Hey, if we, if we were this good this year, then the next few years, we will be a college football playoff with our recruits with more transfers they got, you know? So, I mean, yeah, again, they got their guy, I guess, and we'll see what happens with that. But I agree with, uh, I mean, that Michigan game, you play that in Michigan and the roles are reversed, right? So um, play that in play that in Michigan, play that in East Lansing or Michigan State again. Come on. Yeah. It, it, 100%. Right? 100%. I mean, I mean, besides, like you said, that call, which is funny because I, I was going to ask you a question regarding refereeing and someone talking to me about it. And it was perfect to ask you. Um, what do you, what would you change in the game, in the referee game, in college football game? So, you know, I mean, many of these guys obviously grew up playing. Actually, you know, I don't know if anyone grows up uh, when they're young and they're like, I want to be a referee one day, right? I think it's usually like former fucking athletes that played at high school, college, and the love for the sport guys who just love fucking the sport. And I mean, one thing about refereeing, this goes with all sports, but I guess since this is specifically the college game, you know, many, there's many unfair plays, biased judgment. And you can always criticize and be there's a flawed system that can be goes both ways, right? A holding and pass interference, like you and I can have a, a be on referee, and you know you can be like that's holding, and I can be like nah, let that one go, and I'll call pass interference, and you're be like no, 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 let that one go, right? Like we both know that's just part of football right now. And would would you change anything? Do you think the refs are too involved? in the game and for example in the future we know technology will definitely be in all in all sports like more and more and more and like for example that hutchison issue you know they made the error at that time but say technology is involved or some other new rule 
where they get it right at that moment and they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, bring that shit back. Uh, let's, you know what I mean? So I think, well, I think, so the problem with the Hutch play is that it was called a touchdown. It was called a touchdown. Somebody sitting somewhere in that stadium decided that's not a touchdown. Mm-hmm. They reversed it. And then after the game, and you've always said this, but I think you've even said this on air. Don't tell us after the fact that you screwed up. Don't. Yes. Yeah. Don't. So I think big one there is do not tell us after the fact conferences, the, the, call, the college football playoff, whatever scenario. If you want to know that you screwed up, let the fans sort of bicker about it on the sides. An additional thing that I would obviously change in college football, I think it's a very stock answer, is targeting, Okay. in my opinion, should not be reviewable. Okay. Why I say it should not be reviewable is the game is so fast. But there are hits that we see. You may get it wrong. You may call a targeting call. And whenever I say not reviewable, if there's a flag on the field, take a look at it. If there's no flag, I don't want someone upstairs to be like, you missed a tackle on the skilled possession player there. It's like in the moment, I want those things decided because for those that don't know, a targeting call, you are immediately ejected from the game. So if you're ejected in the first quarter of a game, you miss the second half, and the following game, you miss the first half. You have to miss two full halves of football. Way, way too big of a punishment for stuff that you would have taught. And I get the sports fast. I get we're trying to protect these young men's brains, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't like the review process for something without a flag. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. Would you keep uh, uh, pass interference as it is and holding as it is? I would, I, and part of the reason why I would is these are not pros. I also know that in the NFL, and I've talked about this on other pods, is teams are using it as a play. You throw deep, you know, you or, no, sorry, you have a guy running deep road, and he sh- you, Correct. Throw, you throw a ball short, the wide out comes back to the ball, a guy could be face guarding. That's a huge play. Like That's a yeah. spot foul. I think at the collegiate level, it would be a little bit shedder. I'm also a bit of a purist, or I like that 15-yard sort of zap it feels sort of fair would you change it i i agree with you because again i'm accustomed to what i've seen so I, when you grow up watching something and they've slowly uh, evolved football has slowly evolved adding different things now i mean they protect the shit out of quarterbacks now um and they keep they keep evolving i'm i'm, I'm going off that that part of it to me is slightly annoying sometimes but you can call holding and pass interference pretty much every possession so that's where i'm kind of like okay i understand that the referees have their own ways of coming up with the call and then a lot of times there'll be makeup calls and i mean again this is where i feel like again as 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 it keeps going in sports keeps developing in the next 10, 15, 20 years in our life. I just feel like they will add even more technology into this world. I'm sure, you know, with like baseball, uh, they're even going, or in some cases, I think in like Japan, they have the umpire, the robot umpires, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure as it keeps going, they will possibly add more stuff to, um, to, 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 to football. I, I don't know how, how they would, justify like making that call of like oh this is holding this is pass interference because sometimes that pass interference call is a make or break decision or that yeah. holding call is a make or break decision that ends up being like one team wins and the other team loses because of this call right so I, like, um, I, I, I think I think that would be scary because for me part of what I love about college sports is I'm trusting a bunch of middle-aged men to yeah. decide not to, you know, change outcomes of games. There was I agree. A Penn State in Michigan, and there could have been a hold called on fourth and short. Correct. Uh, Penn State threw it, and the referee didn't want to drop a flag because dropping a flag there changes that game. It changes the the outcome. Uh, absolutely, all, absolutely. All I mean, point. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, no, I I agree, and that's where it's just kind of like it's tricky because sports is at the same time you have that natural part of refereeing that makes a sport good where you're like this is just how it goes there'll be some errors that they make there'll be some decisions that are in favor of your team and so forth and that's just like human error 
um, with everything, right? Humans are not going to be a hundred percent right every single time. So that's like, a, there's a beauty to that. But if you want how technology is like pro progressing to make it a hundred percent, as opposed to like 90%, um, that's where then it's like, Hey, you want it as fair as it can be. This is how you get it. Right. Cause I mean, once upon a time, there wasn't challenge flags. Once upon a time, you couldn't go to the booth and uh, get video replay, right? It was just, yeah. it, it is what it is, right? So um, that's where I, I feel like it, it will keep evolving and uh, I'm sure they'll try to tighten it up as, as technology keeps improving and, and figure out ways where they can make some of these judgments, um, make it higher percentage, right? Just like analytics makes fucking coaching now, uh, decisions based off of analytics because of higher percentages right once upon a time analytics what they were they weren't looking at it mathematical equation to make a decision to go off of fourth down based That's off right. of who, who you have on your team where the play where the ball is how if it's a half an inch like all of that stuff is calculated for an equation to, to tell the coach go for it or not some coaches obviously old school coaches some some obviously don't care for that and and others do same goes with like baseball managers or gm some go with more analytics some don't i mean teach their own but it's now part it's such a big part of sport that as you can see it's technology is now you know being just put into everything and obviously the sports is one thing and it'll be interesting to see like the referee parts going forward it would be very interesting. It's, this would be one sport I think it would break, but at the same time, if you get better results, it's, it's like any product, right? If your product is still solid with these changes or still yeah. effective, that's yeah, what they say sure. about the NFL. The NFL could do whatever they want. We're going to watch. They oh, I think you're and, absolutely right. right. Absolutely right. And collegiate sports is probably the same, but football with robot refs, oh, that would be... It would be weird, but it could happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to put it into perspective with how the world is going, and analytics is that first part that we're using technology to make decisions, and that's just from coaching, and that's also from a general manager position. People are making this free agent decisions in the pros, even, even scouting now for the the college game from an analytics position, right? So it's very different from just like you and I going to scout a player. And just saying this guy, you know, this guy can throw the ball, look at it, look at the, okay, great, great fucking athlete, blah, blah, blah. No, now we're like breaking down every stat, every little detail yeah, every, every in order to see if this guy's moment. for us, right? Like we're, we're breaking down, like Alabama has an analytics recruit guy that, that literally goes with when they're recruiting certain players to see if this guy fits the mold of what they're looking for. Let's fucking see the speed of this guy when he's running these routes, blah, 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 right? Like this is all analytics now officially. So true. No, it's it's a valid. It's it's a discussion point that you're right. The way the world's going, we have cars driving themselves at this point. Technology and numbers and stuff that that will that'll be more prominent. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I, I like to think I'm maybe more pro analytics than I'm not, but I'm very yeah. much. If there's a scale one to ten, I sit in like the four to six range. I'm very. I can gotcha. be swayed both ways. I'm a basic in some ways. In other ways, I'm like, you go for two down fourteen. You know, you score a touchdown and you make it. Uh, an eight-point game and go for two. Yeah. Just different. I, 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 I cherry pick is what they call. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I think again, I, I like to pat, I like to pat ourselves on the back when we get something right, and we both get it right. We both love Utah in the spot. We love oh, yeah. Oregon, officially eliminated from college football contention, which is great. They had no business being there. Great win no. in the horseshoe, but they had no business being there. Uh, I know you tuned in on the the punt return, and you were like, "Holy smokes, Utah is rocking!" And I'm oh, telling yeah. you, that crowd was electric from the get go, from the get go. And I, I'm gonna say, Cameron Rising is a good, solid quarterback. He reminds me, and ah. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth because the guy hasn't really panned out in the NFL, but Gardner Minshew, that's who he reminds me of. Mm, he nice. has that look, not overly athletic, but can run. Not the greatest of arms, but can hit a guy in stride. I really like his game. They they control the flow of that game. I think these two teams will be playing not this week, next week, or championship week. And Utah should be favored, again, on a neutral. 
Am I wrong? No, I agree. I mean, from what I saw, it was complete domination, right? Uh, yeah, Oregon, definitely. Again, um, the good early win, but as you know, as we we discussed before, you know, college, and you can even say the pros. It's like it's always, especially football, week by week, um, and something that happened a few, you know, week two or three. It's it's a long time ago, and after after when they lost to Stanford, that one for me was the big one. Because Stanford's the yeah. one of the worst teams under the Pac-12, right? They are at the bottom of the Pac-12. They suck. And you said that you one, said it best. You said it best. Then you're like. How the hell didn't that? Play? I, I don't know if you said it on air, but how did that play them out of the playoff? And and then you corrected yourself. You're like, because they don't want Cincinnati there. Oregon had no business. Yeah, no, yeah, no absolutely business. not. No, and this is a perfect example, right? Perfect example. Uh, it, it, it was it was pretty much like 38-0 is pretty much what yeah. the score was. Like of how bad Oregon was out there and how dominant Utah was, and it, it, that's where you're just kind of like well why is this team considered a top five team and just because of something they did a long time ago which again great w but again it would have to me my perspective would have been different if they didn't lose to stanford and they ran the table in Oregon in um a pac 12 i would give them way more credit they, and be like, they were they were allowed one loss to utah one loss. to utah there you go there you go yeah nothing yeah. more nothing more yeah and then they would play again in the Pac-12 championship. And if you are a good team, you win. And now you can be the number three, four team, five, whatever the case may be. But, you know, then, then it's a, that argument is more valid after. They got, they got in my opinion, the rash. They got, they, yeah. they got everything they deserved. Utah was very efficient on third downs. They weren't, they weren't converting third and 15, so to speak. They were always out of the chains. They were playing a solid game. So, Glad we both hit that one. Let's move on to something that we both got wrong, which was Alabama hosting Arkansas. And I feel like if you your record this season, Stumpers, it's a solid record. I'm not talking shit. He's 21 and 15. I feel like of those 15 losses, you got three on Arkansas this year. Am I wrong? They, they're involved, you're right. they're yeah. involved in games. They're involved in games that you it, – it's it's – like that, that was bizarre to me. I thought Bama was gonna throttle the statement game. Yeah. Nope. nope. I'm into it. I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know who to give the Heisman to. I have no clue. <laughs> it's sad because okay, it, it, like both guys who are the front runners are benefactors of amazing teams. So it's like great. Yeah, I know Bryce Young throws it for 600 yards, five touchdowns. His his offense is amazing, fantastic. So it's CJ Stroud, his offense is amazing. You have like two of the best wide receivers that are going to go in the top 15 and the NFL draft, fantastic, right? And I mean, I feel bad for like the running backs or the defensive guys because they're not going to get any shine. Um, it's like, hey, the Georgia defense is fucking playing amazing, tossing that big boy, uh, the defensive lineman, uh, Davis. Like, he fucking – but it, they just won't ever get the same publicity, right? So, uh, obviously, Alabama and uh, Ohio State both do have you, – get... do, you agree, do you agree with the committee dropping Bama behind Ohio State? Uh, no, because from my perspective – Bama has a better resume than Ohio State because of the SEC ranked teams that are the teams that they're going to play. So to me, it's a bizarre one where I feel like they shouldn't have made that big of a jump because Ohio State's now number two and Bama's number four? Three. Or three. Okay. I feel like it, it would have, I'm perfectly fine with two and three uh with ohio state being number three and alabama being number two I, I, but for them for them to put them number I, I don't understand it like is it because they just they sl they slaughtered michigan state and alabama just barely beat arkansas top 25 team in arkansas uh i will i totally agree with you i also think these things are so man i don't even know the adjective or verb to use here it's they're so pointless because <laughs> yeah. both of these teams have games coming up that they're going to play their way in or play their way home. Ohio State, as of fucking Saturday at 3 p.m., could fall to, like, the sixth seed. Like, like, there's just so much in front of them that, you know, Ohio State loses to Michigan. They're out. They're not in the college football playoff. Bama beats Georgia. They're in the college football playoff. 
Yeah. I always hate these these week to week rankings. I only bring them up because they are prominent. The things to Absolutely. talk about. I yeah, don't understand yeah. how Bama drops. You beat yeah, I, 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 the, the 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 system is very different, and it doesn't use polls or computer rankings as the BCS bowl championship championship series does. I used to use it. So this is like a 13 member committee and they have their own very unique way to judge these games. And it's like a little weird because it's not really out in the open. They give you little hints in there of like it's how they, sorry. It's a joke. It's, it's a yeah, joke. The way yeah. They do yeah. It. So there's no, like, again, we're, if, if they want it to be transparent, then you just use some sort of like computer uh, tech, again, technology. If you're all about analytics or something, as opposed to the 13 member, disclosed like very much until the final week they come out and they actually say why the four teams will be there but besides that it's like yeah, they, we don't really know what makes the difference of like for example why Oregon was there oh it's because they beat Ohio State okay so you're now saying that whoever you beat is more important than how you beat them okay so oh wait a minute but now because Ohio State smoked Michigan State they're going to be number two and Alabama goes down because yeah. of the difference is it a seven point win or is it a fucking 49 point win right like now it's so where right I'm, the rule yeah. the rules are so different and you know you and I use the words blue the word blue buds they're they're so different like the blue bloods pass certain tests it doesn't matter if they win by zero or 100 if Ohio State won they won if they but if they blow a team out it's worth a little bit more. Cincinnati, exactly. you gotta go. You gotta go pump teams by fifty, and it's like I get it because in the end, all they want is a Final Four that's competitive. The way yes. they've done this, we've had some duds of Final Fours. We've had some oh, duds. big time, big time, big time. And then, and, and I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna bring up Notre Dame. They they've been part of a lot of duds, and I mean that since that Cincinnati win over Notre Dame is getting better and better every week. Where even if chaos happens the next two weeks. It's kind of like, hey, we beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame's like number six or seven in the uh, college football ranking, right? So automatically, Cincinnati should be guaranteed a spot at this moment. Oh, they they, they win and they're in. And to cap off the, the recap of Week 12, they smoked SMU, who is probably the third best team in their conference, uh, 48-14. And I read someone's tweet, and I felt like it was perfectly worded. They played their most complete game probably since Notre Dame, and nobody really cares. It's B Houston in the AAC final, right? That's, that's there you the go. Point. That's yeah, that, yeah. that's all they have to do, and they should be locked in. And you know, what's really going to piss me off or grind my gears is if Bama beats Michigan and wins the Big Ten. If they get Cincinnati in the two versus three, I know you're betting on Ohio State there. You, oh you, yeah, it's the most. It's it's a free win. It's a free program when I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> Um, let's, uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. We got, we got 11 games, 10 games, 10 games. My thing's a little bit off right now. Um, we will start with the, so some of these have names and if I'm missing any of the names, you let me know. Uh, we got Ohio state at Michigan. We have a two versus five, which is fantastic. Uh, Ohio state is minus eight for this game. I will break it down very quickly. Very quickly. I think Michigan State is going to be the best front four that Ohio State. Before you break this down, I I think you're. Before you break this down, this advice right here is worth money right here. For gamblers, we're going to bet on this. Just listen to this breakdown. (laughs) Sorry. I said Michigan State, but Michigan's front four is better than any front four Ohio State has played this entire season. There's Mm -hmm. no, there's, I don't believe it's even close. I think front seven wise, maybe on par with Michigan State. Even still, I think they're able to make Ohio State one dimensional, whichever direction they want. So I think you and I would both be ignorant if we said, as Michigan fans, we want Ohio State to run the ball here. We want them to run the ball. We we do not want the aerial attack because the aerial attack there is still the opportunity that Stroud gets out and runs, et cetera. So we want them to run it, not run it for seven at a time, you know, three, four, the odd 11, 12 yard run, uh, potentially, you know, pop a hand in there, trust our front four to potentially force a turnover and hope Ohio state falls into this rhythm where they become a little bit predictable with 
you know, run twice, pass once, try to time it up. I also think at the same exact time, Ohio State wants to make us an aerial team. They're going to want to, they're going to want to make us play with our left hand. They're going to want Kate to throw it 30 times. I think the recipe to winning this game is our front four making two to three game changing plays. I'm not saying fumbles, picks only. I'm saying, you know, third and short, they, mm-hmm. they, they try to create a play action, get home, sack, force a field goal, force a punt. That is to me, key number one. Key number two is, I usually tell tell you, give me the score or tell me the score in points and who wins this game. Tell me the time of possession. So if Michigan possesses the ball over 40 minutes, sorry, over 38 minutes, that's my over, over 38 minutes, they win this game. So they have to control the ball to the point where they're converting on some sweaty fourth and ones, fourth and twos. They mm-hmm. have to roll the dice. They have to, as much as, you know, it's a very old man thing to say, Get the crowd engaged. Ensure oh, yeah. the people in that stadium that they may lose, but it's going to be a game. It's going to be something we we haven't really seen in this rivalry in a very long time. Even the game we went to wasn't electric and exciting. You know, it was fun because Michigan won, but this rivalry has missed that other than the Braxton Miller year. It's missed it. It's missed that umph. And if that crowd gets going, I, I want to see what the freshman does. I want to see what their freshman quarterback does when. You know, let's say Michigan's up 10 and your run game, who you've been sort of hanging your hat on is working. Now you got to throw into deep coverage. Now you got to throw into coverage that we're, we're sitting and our, our, our uh, front four are pinning. And I hate to be the guy to say our, but in this matchup, it's our. Um, our front four pinning their ears back, get it, getting home with some NFLers. Uh, I'm taking the plus eight. And I know you have the minus eight. They'll tell me why you have the minus eight, but I've taken the plus eight and I am confidently taking plus eight. In the past, I always would tell you I'm doing the money line and spread. Never really confident in the money line. This <laughs> year, I'm I'm more confident in the money line this year like since the Braxton Miller year. I'm way more confident. Um, so yeah, that's 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 my spiel. And I really, really hope we slow down Henderson. I really hope. I I I, I don't want to see a 200 yard game. Obviously, I'm I'm okay with 110. I'm okay with 110 because he should be coding the ball 25 times for us to win. That's my third. I I will be pulling for Michigan. Um, I I hope you're right. Uh, and, you made, and you made all the right points, but this is what I got to say about that. Shh. Oh, it's power. That's where you get the chair shot to the back and you, you stick with, with the team that keeps winning you money. Sure. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going with Ohio State. Michigan, you know what? This is you're absolutely right. This is gonna be their best, their best year to fucking beat them since the year we went to watch them. Um I, I think well, the, the year the year, like a, the year the, sorry to cut you off the year in the horseshoe. The right the Correct, correct, that correct. That year. one, that one, exactly. And if you want to go into refereeing again, that's a perfect example of a fourth down that was was that a first down? It looked like a first down while you and I were watching it together. But the computer that with that would if there was technology, would the computer say yes, no? But the referee said uh, no. So sorry, that, I, that I, was I, I cut you off your thread. Sorry. So you said this is the best year. Their best year to beat them. Yeah, no, no, that. But you're right. That year was a great one. I'm just going off of. I feel like this team is more talented, all around, possibly. Um, maybe the same. Maybe I, mean, I, I, I would, I would compare them to. I, I thought maybe that's the same in terms of. I guess their ranking. I think they're they were higher um, this year than they were at that time. I don't think they were um, college football playoff like right at a number five. I I could be wrong, but I don't think they were as high as they are um, this year. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, one thing that scares me is that Kenneth Walker didn't do anything on that, on the Ohio state fucking defense. And that to me earlier, earlier in the year, when I watched Ohio state, that was one, that's where they were very vulnerable. And that's where I was like, okay, Michigan runs the ball. Boom. This is how, this is how they're going to get the form. And that has to be the formula. 
again, uh, Michigan State's secondary stinks, but Cade McNamara didn't fucking didn't unfortunately sling it the way CJ Stroud has, and maybe doesn't have the weapons as CJ Stroud has with two top fucking fifteen uh, wideouts that are going to go this year. So. One thing is for sure, in my opinion, the way Michigan wins this game, I agree with you, time of possession, but how do you keep time in possession? Run the fucking ball, keep the chains moving, and, and hopefully Cade McNamara uh, doesn't turn the ball over. If he doesn't turn the ball over and they can, and they can run the ball to Ohio State, hopefully Corum is fully healthy for this one, so they have like the dynamic duo there uh, in the backfield. Um, and then I give them more of a chance. Otherwise, if if our if our, if their defense the, does the same thing that they did to Kenneth Walker, unfortunately, I don't know how how well because that that really means the time of the possession might go into Ohio State's favor now. If we get out, if we go out four and zero quick time, and now our defense is out there for a super long time. I, I hate to say, it, but now you're you're playing into their advantage. Where can you keep up with their their athletes? Can our defense keep up with it? Right? We I, we have two of the best, uh, fucking o- Ojabo and Hutchinson. If they can get to CJ Stroud, fantastic. But if they can't, I I, I can see this game getting out of hand. Where it'll, it'll it could be a, in my opinion a 14, 20, a twenty one point win for Ohio State again. Like, I think, uh, I think I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Kenneth Walker was controlled we won't beat this game down too hard i just think one thing i need you to remember is i think michigan's offensive line is up there in the, for the best in the country and their running schemes like both of the football teams i support this year or support my entire life they are both good at running the football and they, mm-hmm. they find different ways where even if you play a team with a good nose tackle you're able to get out on the edge set the edge you're able to get the defense sort of moving left to right guessing I do believe Michigan's run game does show up. I agree. I sorry. I sorry. I disagree. I think the run game shows up. Okay. It's not be for two hundred either. I I'm with you. They have definitely addressed. They've they've what they called filled a hole within their defense. Whatever they they've done scheme wise. If that means they're putting seven in the box, committed to the run, then Cade's gonna have to make a few extra throws in the passing game. Right. He's gonna have to. And I think the difference with this Michigan team is. They do have some aerial threats that can get down the field. They do have some guys that make plays with the ball in their hands. Um, mm-hmm. Listen, worst case scenario here, it's exactly the way you said it, and it's a 20-plus game. I want, a, I want a tight game. I, I want the fourth quarter to roll around, hold up four fingers, and just hope. You know what I mean? I, 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 can't, I can't take another tough loss. I mean, I feel bad for you doing this pod. I, I watched the Bills and Colts this week. I, I don't want that this week, Petey. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, I had the Colts, but I, I told you before the game, I love the Colts revenge game. I, I was like, it. there's Wait. absolutely no fucking way Bills win this. I cover that spread. That I, I had the money line, and, and I'm just going, telling you the truth. I'm a Bills fan, but I took the Colts. Stumpers, I sent Johnny a message at four o'clock on Sunday that never got responded to, and it said. The AFC South is the SEC. It is the best. <laughs> the Bills, they lost to the Jags, the Titans, and the Colts. And last year, there was all, all the Colts playing a shit division. And the Bills, I'm just happy. Uh, no, but all joking aside, hopefully a competitive game. My final score, I say, is 31-20 Michigan. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I hope that's the case. My, my pick? Score, yeah. Oh man, I'm gonna say uh 35 21. Ohio right. State. Yeah, that's a rough one. Okay, uh, he's not just doing this for the pot, FYI, he always fades Michigan in this matchup. It's a life hedge. Uh, I yeah, thought he was uh, actually, unfortunately, I, I've learned my lesson too many times, like with this game. Unfortunately, that I, I know better. I, I thought you were gonna be a coward and take Michigan for it because I was gonna say the same thing. He always goes opposite, but. No, yeah, you always. This is your thing. Uh, so, we, so I have Michigan there minus uh, plus eight. I, I technically have Michigan minus eight. I think thirty-one twenty. <laughs> I know uh, you say not only they're gonna win the fucking game, they're gonna, well, they're, gonna, they're gonna they're gonna cover <laughs> the other team spread. Uh, and I and you have Ohio State minus eight. Um, next game I have as well is Penn State and Michigan State. I'm gonna take Penn State minus one and a half. These are two teams that. Uh, 
I mean, Michigan State's had an okay season. We've already talked to them at length or about them at length. Uh, Penn State has had a real rocky season, and they, they're like, you know what? James Franklin, come back. You're staying yeah. with us. <laughs> Breed, yeah. I, I think they get up for this game. I also – it's cool within the Big Ten. I've watched quite a bit of it this season. Um, I think Penn State matches up well against Michigan State. Uh, I think – if I really, really had to, had to like throw a dart here, if I had to pick a, a thinking, is Penn State doesn't run the ball. You said it best. They, they yeah. don't need to run the ball. They just throw yeah. it. What yeah. does Michigan State struggle with? Stopping? Oh, secondary stinks. They're, they're, they're the worst secondary I've, I've seen in the games I watch. Oh, yeah. That's, so that's what I, I get. Michigan State is stout against the run. I get they're able to control the ball with the run. Penn State doesn't need to run the ball. They're just going to throw the ball. Yep. Clifford's going to have 35 plus attempts, right? So I have Penn State minus one and a half here. Nice. I, sure. I, 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 that's a, yeah, it's a tricky one. The spread is one. Um, I like, I like that analysis that you gave. Um, I, I would, I would push towards that as well. It's interesting because both these teams have committed to their coaches full time, right? This is obviously, you know, if both these coaches suck in the next two, three years, that contract, those 10 year contracts are gone. They just get rid of them either way. But, um, at this particular moment, they've, they've committed to both these guys, Franklin and Tucker, right? So um, this is definitely a big W for future recruits and for, for you know, for yeah. both of them heading into bowl season, right? So this is a big one for both of them. I really don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to show up, right? Is Kenneth Walker going to blow up for a big game you know what i mean like I, I don't know what to expect from both but your analysis is perfect that's that's something that i saw um with watching both these games and i'll, I'll take penn state as well because it's it's the read for it and then the spread is interesting with just being one i, I have i have it wrong actually it's not one and a half it's minus half is what i actually oh, okay. found it earlier but either way they're favorite which is yes nice. um we'll jump to bedlam we're going to go Bedlam. We're going to go Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. I know you have a pick here. Uh, for someone that doesn't like the Big 12, it seems like every week you're on it. Uh, what do you like here? I'm just going off of what you said. I, I saw the Oklahoma State defense looking good, and I feel like they, they, they've they lost this fucking game so many times that, I, I mean, I don't know the, the statistic at the top of my head, but – you know, watching it every few years, every year, it's kind of it reminds me that Oklahoma always wins this game. So I feel like this is the year that Oklahoma State has a good defense. Like you said, it's a bizarre situation where Oklahoma State isn't that crazy. It, like this game is maybe not going to be 49, 42 final, and it's more likely going to be in the 30s or 20s. Who knows, right? Considering how Caleb Williams, um, we'll see how he does against this defense. So I think that's the main thing. Seeing Caleb Williams not play up to what he did when he came in against the top Big 12 uh, defenses. Um, I'm going to take Oklahoma State based off of based off of that. And uh, yeah, Big 12 has been good to me the last couple of weeks. I've actually won with them, so sticking with it. I, I will say I think a real, it sounds like cowardly, but let me finish the statement is they don't need to win the turnover battle, Oklahoma State. They just can't lose it. You can't mm-hmm. turn over battle. They turn over. They turn over twice. Oklahoma needs to turn over twice. They win the game if they do not lose the turnover battle. And I think it's just because their defense is stout enough. And I think my biggest concern with taking Oklahoma State and why it didn't is Spencer Sanders is not. It's not always very trustworthy, mm-hmm. but but I feel like they've been hiding him correctly, and I think. Gundy's been always, Mike Gundy's been always very, very judged on the way he plays conservative or coaches conservatively in Bedlam. I feel mm-hmm. like he goes away from that. And it makes me sick that you're like, Oklahoma State's lost this game enough. You know, it's time for them to win. But my favorite team, they've lost this game enough. They're going to lose again. It's like, fuck no. off. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. But I, I get your point. It, it makes sense. Uh, a few teams we don't really talk about often coming up. Uh, We'll start with BYU at USC. Uh, weird one because BYU is penetrating that like top 10 zone. Uh, BYU yeah. minus 17. USC looks like an absolute travesty right now in defense. They look terrible. Uh, UCLA oh, they're, only they're put up a thousand points. Yeah. Like the really, really what I want to jump into, not at length, is 
USC needs to go out and find like a program changing coach. They need yeah. to find somebody. Like th- th- this is getting ugly fast. Oh yeah, yeah. This, this USC team, it's it's disgusting, right? And I mean, um, it's funny because when you and I watched uh, USC and Stanford, the program was going up. There were two ranked teams. Um, and you know, this is just a few years ago with Sam Darnold on this squad. Um, and I think they even had Pittman and they had, they had a, a good squad over there. So it's, yeah. Juju, the Juju Smith. Juju. 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 Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And I mean, yeah, no, it's not looking good. And, and again, as, as some of these coaches are getting, uh, like Franklin was one, right. And, uh, it doesn't seem like Jimbo's going anywhere. It's kind of like, who do they go and snatch up? Right. Do they go snatch up one of these guys? I have a nice one for you. Huh? Wake Forest coach, Clawson. Oh, okay. awesome. like he, he, he would be a good fit there. I don't know how you recruit on the West Coast, but yeah. offense is fun. I think everyone knows Pac-12 football is usually very aerial, very fun. Yeah. If he fits that. That's but a good yeah, one. Uh, that's a good one. Get. And it's very, very off off the rails. It's not a, probably not even in discussions, but I, I like Kloss, and I think he needs to go to a good school. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, speaking of the other team, uh, that USC faced when we were we were live, ND at Stanford. I know you have a pick here. And you're making me sick. You're becoming an Irish fan. Who you like here? Yeah, I'm just going off of Notre Dame, just being impressive with these subpar teams, right? So they yep. they've smoked these subpar teams. Um, I, Stanford, in my opinion, sucks, and Notre Dame is making the case again. They only have one L, and they're they're doing their part in terms of uh, putting their name in the college football playoff once again. Um, and I mean, yeah, if you see the last few games, their defense has stepped up. And ever since the UNC game, they beat Navy 34-6, uh, Virginia 28-3, Georgia Tech 55 zip. And I've gambled with them and won with these big spreads. And Stanford is the bottom of the Pac-12. I don't see, I see another resume for Notre Dame to make their case and try to get into the college football playoff. If, you know, if everything doesn't go their way, unfortunately, they'll obviously get a big time New Year's equal. And again, if uh, they were probably in the ACC championship game, it probably helped their case to beat another ranked team. Unfortunately, they literally played one ranked team. Uh, maybe to actually two. Wisconsin was ranked at the time, and they beat them, and then they played Cincinnati. So it would have helped them to beat uh, Pittsburgh or Wake Forest in the ACC championship game, or even Clemson. I think I think you're a million percent right. They chose money over the potential of it, and who are we lying to? None of these teams are winning the college football playoff. None of them. Georgia <laughs> is winning the college football playoff, but to get there is big for programs, and it would have been big for Notre Dame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would it bring more money than the TV rights they get? I don't know, but I, I'm with you. I'm with you. They, they an ACC championship would get them in with the one loss against Cincy. I think also the Cincy loss at home really hampers them. If they were on the road there, it would feel no, different. That's bad. Yeah, right? you're 100 percent right. It would feel different. Um, yeah, I, I really like that pick. I really do. Uh, I just feel you round off their back part of the schedule. They've covered everywhere. I feel like they're, they're due for a letdown. That's why I did take it. But if I had mm-hmm. to pick a side, it'd be Notre Dame because Stanford's shown me nothing. They've shown me zero other than the Oregon game. I think they're 0-6 yeah. since. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, the Egg Bowl, Ole Miss at Mississippi State. Mississippi State minus two. Uh, I think Corral's got like a real long shot at the Heisman here. I think this would be a really fun game to watch, if I'm not mistaken. This is on the on Friday. And we're Thursday. Recording this. Thursday. It's on Thursday. Thursday. It's on Thanksgiving. Thursday. 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 Yeah, seven thirty. Seven thirty. I don't really have an edge. Don't watch here. the Don't watch the Bills game. Watch Mississippi and Mississippi State. I, I truly agree with you, and I probably will be doing that. Yeah. Um, Bills game is going to be garbage. Everybody's out for the Saints, right? Uh, I, I have no edge here. I just feel like it's a very very interesting game, and it's too bad there's not a little bit more on the line because. Uh, it would be amped up. This is probably the second biggest game in the SEC this weekend, right? Oh, absolutely. And this Mississippi State team is pretty good. You know, we 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 I, I talked about them. Uh, I think the Auburn win when they came back and, and won that game, and I was like, man, this team is actually not that bad. 
And I, I, I think Mississippi State pulls this one off. I think it'll be a big yeah, – they've had, a, like, a big-time uh, season with Leach, and they're playing – this. I'm sure this is going to be a shootout, right? This is going to be literally whoever has the ball last wins the game. Uh, Should and, be. Uh, that's why it's going to be entertaining. That I think the over and under is 64. So I think, you know, the final score will definitely be up there. 49-42, one of those crazy score lines. Yeah. So like it, like um, it. Yeah, no, it'll definitely be something like that. And I mean, for yeah, Ole Miss, it'll be it'll be a huge W against their rival. They're number nine in the country, right? So this is another W that definitely moves would move them up, um, you know, in in a, getting a, a big time bowl game, right? But for Mississippi State, hey, they've actually had a better season than expected, and they will be ranked and will have a good nice bowl for them if they pull this one off. And obviously, it's a rivalry game. Uh, I like Mississippi State here. You know what? I'm going to do a little switcheroo. Nice. I'm going to go Ole Miss plus two here. Ooh, okay. Nice. Uh, I'm going to go Ole Miss plus two. I was going to take Auburn in the Iron Bowl. I, I'm going to I'm going to take Ole Miss plus two. And just to watch Corral, maybe drunk. Yeah. Uh, That's a yeah, good one. You two. know why Bo, Bo Nix is not playing? I don't know about that Auburn team. Yeah, that's that's – Part of the reason, but I also just wanted to stay competitive. Okay. So yeah, I, I I'm gonna go Ole Miss plus two. That's that's the last one to true. Uh, I like the switcheroo. That was the one, in, I think that was one of the few switcheroos you've done in on the pod. Big time. <laughs> because usually <laughs> I, I'm very rigid. I come in with my <laughs> with my picks and it. Uh, yeah. I you know what? Since he had ECU, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because obviously it's college football playoff relevant. That line seems really scary and short, 14 and a half. There should be more. Uh, is there any way ECU beats them? I, I know you and I both have not watched Eastern Carolina this year. Is there any way no. they beat them? Does that, that, no, no, this, no, this is, again, Cincinnati knows what time it is. They have to come out here and have a statement W. I, I would put money on Cincy all day. I mean, they, again, you can't let up. You have to keep winning games just to show – uh, winning games by 21 points plus whatever, just to keep showing that, like, hey, we deserve to be here. We deserve to be the number four team in the college football playoff and, you know, give us a chance against against uh, Georgia. That's fair. Yeah, that's, that's they can't, totally they can't fucking barely win this game because it just goes into then, like, more analysts being like, what? why are they here? Why are they here? If they beat East Carolina by seven points by three, you know what I mean? No, that's a, a completely fair. I'm just saying. The line feels weird to me, but yeah, yeah. It, it should yeah. be. Uh, we'll b- briefly touch on the Iron Bowl, which you sort of highlighted the big thing is Bo Nix being out. Uh, the kicker's out. Oh, Plus man. 19 and a half, Bama going into Auburn. Uh, is it one Bama picks picks the score, picks their number? Fuck, like you would think so because, fuck, like I like the Auburn team, but they've, they, unfortunately, like some, some L's that, right, the Mississippi State comeback. That that's a you know that's a heartbreaker you know what I mean you're up by like 28 points and they come back and just smoke you, um, and then losing to South Carolina last week, that doesn't look the greatest right. Uh, I don't know. Loss. I mean, it's terrible. Yeah, that, that's a bad loss considering you know your Auburn right. So, and I mean they have that uh, LSU transfer Finley playing. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know what to expect from this Auburn team. I I was I'd be more confident with Bo Nix out there at home playing against Bama. Um, 19 and a half is a lot considering what we saw with Bama. 19, they were there fair by 21, 22, I think, against Arkansas and never had a chance to cover that. Um, so to me, it's tricky. I, I mean, based off of what we saw last week, I would push Alabama's way and say they do beat them by 20 points. Um, but I mean, again, it is a rivalry game. Auburn is still Auburn at home. And you would think they would keep it close, possibly, but based off of last week, it's hard to. It would be hard for me to back Auburn. I, I don't even know a scoreline that Auburn wins. I thought they would be able to keep it close, and up until like four minutes ago, I had Auburn plus nineteen and a half. But um, yeah, I don't know the route they can win this game, and I know Bama's got everything to play for this week, and Bama's got everything yeah. to play for to you know in the SEC championship and everything being in front of them. Uh, I just know 
this is probably the second biggest rivalry in college sports. I, th- I think, and I think there's always oh, value. Yeah. If, if they, if they, if you're, if you go to the south, they'll say they're the most important one. But I mean, valid, valid. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to be a coward if if I uh, you had a gun to my head, I'd say Auburn plus nineteen and a half. But Fuck, yeah, yeah it's tricky. I, 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 I would basically take Auburn nineteen and a half based off of the tradition of this game. And exactly. be like, yes. I, they, there's no fucking way Auburn, like they just wouldn't allow it at home. I, I just, I just don't think even with the Finley guy, uh, backup quarterback, I feel like there's just no way they get blown out in Auburn's home. Right. Like this is the rivalry. It, it reminds me of LSU. Reminds me of LSU, that same thing. LSU had a mediocre year, but guess what? They got up for that game against Bama. And I, you know yeah. what? I, I think I'd take out Auburn just off of that tradition. So, yeah, I, I agree. So, to break it down for everybody, the game is on the game. Uh, Machine Ohio State is on Fox at 12 on Saturday. And Auburn and Bama playing in the Iron Bowl is at 3.30 on CBS. Those are the two biggies. Uh, and then after Oklahoma State, right? Oklahoma. At night, right? That's a night. Yeah, at night. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe it's on at 7. It could be right. Yeah, 7.30. Yeah, 7, ABC. Yeah, ABC. So all the big three networks have it. Uh, quickly, before I let you go, Georgia 1, Ohio State 2, Bama 3, Cincy 4, Michigan 5, Notre Dame 6. There is a world where Oklahoma State should be able to penetrate through this, but there needs to be chaos. I think they're the most likely outside team to penetrate this, even over Notre Dame. Is that crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it, it'll be very hard. I think the winner of Michigan, Ohio State will pretty much be in there. Has and to win the Big Ten, right? I mean, Michigan it still has to win the Big Ten, and it could be a little uh, tricky for a Michigan team to play Wisconsin again. Yeah. yeah. Um, it won't be, yeah, that won't be uh, easy. Um, but if Ohio right. State does beat Michigan, I expect them to definitely beat Wisconsin. I think this I, will be Ohio State's toughest battle in uh, the Big Ten. And, and they'll stay at two if that's the route. And Bama loses to Georgia, I think. And Bama should be eliminated from the conversation, but we know how that rolls. Uh, yeah, no, no. A bit of a joke. They, would have um, to, they would have to lose by like 20-something points, embarrassed, to really put them at like number five or whatever, you know. And your ball, your buddy Paul Finnenbaum still will have them in. Um, oh, absolutely! That guy fucking loves Alabama. I, I'm pretty sure he sleeps with like a Nick Saban uh, toy, uh, like a bunch of dolls. So. <laughs> he's, got a, he's in a Nick Saban pillowcase. Just, yeah, I can't stand that guy. He must have like everything Alabama in his room, like everything. Absolute joke. Um, favorite, his favorite animal, elephant, crimson tide, <laughs> roll tide, yeah, for sure. For sure. He, he owns nothing but crimson ties. Crimson <laughs> ties. Uh, I really, I really wanted to thank you for carving up some time for your busy schedule. I know you're about to ball. I needed you to know Michigan is being Tarkleton State in basketball. And Are a they couple of weeks. Smoking we were, them or what? No, they they weren't smoking them. Uh thankfully we do college football pods right now, Stumpers, because if we were a college basketball pod. There'd be a lot of time dedicated to Michigan basketball and what's going on right there. Um, I really wanted to thank you for jumping on. Uh, enjoy enjoy your Saturday Ohio State party that you're going to with Brutus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Wait up, wait up, wait up. <laughs> you are. I'll be, you're I'll good. be, I'll have my Ohio State jersey on and my chair shot to the Michigan fan. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I know you will. Shout out to Dylan for the music. Thank you, Tyler, for editing and all the photos we post on Instagram. Uh, Stumpers, please like, subscribe, comment on Instagram, Twitter. Please send the Stump Pod at the Stump Pod uh, questions and stuff because Johnny probably thinks no one listens to this and only people asking questions are asking him. And it makes me sick. And for the record, I am half a game up in the pick standings. And if Michigan costs me, I still consider this a win. Thank you very much, Stumpers. <laughs> Take it easy. Enjoy.
We just passed a foreign city sign, your feet on the dash. You got your favorite top on, I got my foot on the